Imagine a vibrant discussion between people that includes both openness and critical thought in the pursuit of truth. The Purchasing Truth Podcast is an experience, a journey, an exploration of the impact that negative messages in politics and the media have on our families, community, society, and nation. Join your hosts, Bill Sterling and Tom Hazard, to discover new concepts and language strategies that will reveal effective ways of establishing truth. This podcast series will tackle current events, leadership challenges, healthcare confusion, integrity in business, and many other areas that affect us all. Gain clarity and understanding of the various truth perspectives. Welcome to Purchasing Truth. Welcome back to Purchasing Truth. I'm Tom Hazard, along with your host, Bill Sturley. And today, Bill, I mean, I, you know, we always come to these shows and, you know, we plan some things out. We have some things we'd like to discuss. And then something yes. happens in our world and then the schedule gets pushed back. And today is one of those days. We're going to sure talk is. about the media photo op and all the troubling issues around that regarding truth. And yeah. I, I was shocked were you bill i you know it's um uh shocked disheartened um the thing that you know those of um those who listen to the purchasing truth podcast get a sense that if they're paying attention this is a show about communication and how communication gets transferred and even though tom and i might have some opinions the thing to really capture is, is that certain words and phrases activate the listener in, in the belief of right or wrong or good or bad. The challenge is that when we come to certain terms like loyalty or family or um, uh, that a person in authority is to be respected, that we've got to really watch how we are supporting a person when they are doing things on their own behalf to create an impression, but aren't really uh, backing that up with substance. So this is a great example, Tom, of the, the photo op doing a lot of these elements of meeting one set of needs for the president, but not really following the law not really being mindful of the constitution, these kinds of things. Now the well, I'll get some pushback around this. And Tom, there have been some comments on, you know, YouTube going like, hey, this is partisan, but the show's really about communication and how the appearance of something activates a human being and purchases truth or hijacks truth away from the person because it's fitting in and, and hitting the loyalty button or hitting the respect button or, you know, hitting the identity button. And all of a sudden it says, this is what the president meant. So now I've got to discard truth because I'm loyal to him. I respect him. He's a part of my identity to see how cleanly I am now on the president's side, as well as any, person that ha is loyal to their vote, that, are, that is loyal to their experience. And, and Tom, take us through some of the thoughts that might be coming up in your mind, because you might not have thought I was going to start our show that way, because a lot of times we, we, we talk about things, but you don't know how it's going to start. Yeah, no, I mean, I didn't know you were going to go there. I and mean, I think it, it makes a lot of sense for you to go there to, to acknowledge, you know, the needs of the president and what he was trying to accomplish there. Sure. I mean, because, you know, you got to think about what's the motivation. Well, I think, you know, he knew there were protests going on there in Washington, DC, and he knew there was some damage at a church, you know, site yes. of a very important, you know, site. Um, but then what he, what he had, the people right. under his power do to clear peaceful protesters was really disturbing in terms of using, right. you know, tear gas and, you know, rubber right. bullets and things to clear a crowd. 
And it's not like he was going there to give a speech. I mean, when he got there, he didn't say anything. Yeah, that was that was also disheartening too, because if he was going there to uh, make a speech or if he had a speech prepared, and if I was the president, I probably would have said something like this. Be behind me as a church that's been damaged and burned. And because my faith is so strong, I wanted to come down here with this Bible and really talk about how peace and being able to stand for uh, justice for all and not to damage other people's property, but to express oneself in a civilized manner. Can you imagine that speech coming out of his mouth? It, it would not have mattered if you believed him or not. What he was saying would be undeniable and somewhat, I think, justifiable that he went to that location to do that. Right, right. All of a sudden, I got to, and then all of a sudden, it's like, well, the president wanted to do this, and it was really an important speech, wasn't it? See, you, you, you give his team something to work on, but now they're just calling it a photo op instead of a turning point to unify the nation. He's, he doesn't even, it could have been the, it literally could have been the turning point and they could have argued then, yeah, getting there was not the best way to get there. There, there could have been other ways to do the same thing. Yeah, it wasn't the strongest strategy to get there and do it in front of the church. But the message was congruent with the Bible and with Jesus' message and with the peace that the nation needed to follow. They, they would have had something. I feel disheartened. See, that's why I started the show is I feel uh, surprised and disheartened, Tom. Surprised and disheartened. Oh. It's like... And what, what's really very transparent about this now that it's, it's happened and we understand more of the details is that there yeah. really was not much of a plan to do this because not if a there plan had to get been there. Plan, yes, no, go ahead. not, yeah, not yeah. a plan to get there. Not a, well, first of all, if there was a plan, all of the people with president Trump that he asked to walk with him, including his defense secretary, among others, these cabinet members, you know, what is it, was Bill Barr there, I think? There were, there were several cabinet members there. They would have been told what was going to happen. Right. Because the, the Secretary of Defense was blindsided. He didn't know. He didn't know he was going to be asked to stand there beside the president for a photo op. He didn't know what he was getting into. And, and to the point where he came out and made a statement afterwards, the day after, I guess, saying that, you know, he did not... He really, I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, so I'm not quoting him, but basically said, I don't I believe know. that military force is needed. I, you know, and, and, and to, um, to control any of the protesters. And I yes. don't believe in deploying military. I don't think we should use the Insurrection Act. And now he is on thin ice with the White House for coming out and saying that, but he was so disturbed that he, right. his appearance was hijacked to give the president cover and give the president, I guess, you know, credibility to, to make that photo op more credible. Um, if this was planned, he would have been in on it and, you know, known what he was getting into. Again, surprised and disheartened surprised um before this person took this job if he just followed any the thread of behavior of donald trump hijacking your career he's done this with many many people he'll meet at uh, trump tower he'll talk about with uh you know a very influential african-american person about their foundation i gotta think about who it was walk them down into the street and immediately trash obamacare and have the person stand there as a shell it's really disheartening but and the person's going like we didn't talk about any of that stuff upstairs we just talked about the things that I wanted to, that you wanted me to hear. And then you come down here and then use my celebrity to validate a, a net, a, 
a message I don't stand for. Of course, the celebrity, it gets pounded by their fans going like, how could you stand with that person? I'm, he's going like, I had no idea that that was happening. And this is a great example of these military you know, um, leaders getting hijacked by a marketing and branding person. That's what they get hijacked by. They, it's a media photo op that is, I'm in command and these people of respect are behind me. Right. And that, that, that God's on my side as he's holding a Bible up. He's trying to, yes. you know, pander, quite honestly. I, I, well, that's a yeah. label maybe. But to, yeah. to the yeah, religious community. And, and he was asked by the media, is that your Bible, Mr. President? Did you see how he answered that? Yeah. No, that it's was a so, Bible. It's a Bible. How transparent. It's a Bible. Don't, I mean, doesn't that imply, okay, you didn't care enough to bring your own bible or you maybe you don't have a bible and i don't know it was interesting did you see how um uh joe biden uh commented on this and in, in his speech yeah uh, i got part of his uh, what what part are you remembering right well, now? well the part uh, i'm remembering is, is well because he had of course ordered this peaceful protest to be disbanded and use tear gas and rubber bullets to to disperse all the people joe biden was saying you know that it's nice to see the president holding a bible it'd be nice if he actually read it once in a while he might learn something about yeah. you know respect for you know common human decency and and people and all this and so I've, i found that pretty interesting he trump sort of walked into and gave joe biden a um an opportunity to show a different kind of leadership yeah so let's go ahead, let's go ahead and uh, shift our shift our narrative here i'm going to pretend i'm uh going to be president trump thinking right now that's what i'm going <laughs> to pretend okay? okay yeah and i've been watching tv and i've been watching riots and my flat earth mindset as the president is what i see is real okay that's my flat earth mindset. I see it. There's people rioting. It's not safe for me. I want to go do something. Notice okay. the flat earth mindset is already saying outside it's violent. In fact, I've had people scare me and put me in the bunker. But all of a sudden, I don't really think I'm all that scared. And I don't want to be seen as I'm in the bunker. So, but it's scary outside. There are people rioting, rioting and looting. And I want to go stand in front of a church. Yes, Mr. President, you want to stand in front of the church. How can we get the Secret Service to get me stand in front of the church? Yes, Mr. President, we'll be able to get you in front of the church. Now, we keep using a peaceful crowd. He is not looking at it that way. His flat earth mindset, it's violent outside. So it's a form of empathy to say the president was fearful. He had a need for safety and protection. In order to get safety and protection, he asked his staff to get him to the church in a safe and protective way as well as, read it, as, well as the other cabinet members. And this is how people interpreted the order to be followed. The president then could say, I didn't know that they were going to use tear gas and I didn't know that they were going to shoot rubber bullets because it's not safe outside. I see it on TV that it's not safe outside. In other words, I'm telling the truth. I'm just looking at my flat earth mindset and I'm using the TV as information because the TV counts as millions of people. Uh, so what about these thousand peoples that are going to be scared or terrorized on my way to the church I want to stand in front of? And oh, by the way, I'm really interested in the impression of respect and the impression of strength 
because my brand is the impression of strength. It's not the execution of strength or for the good of the people. It's the impression of a strong leader. And this is the way strong leaders speak because I watch Putin and I watch these other leaders and speak in a, in a way that they do. And that's my vision of America is if I'm in charge, because that's what I've been doing in my career the whole time. I'm in charge. I've got money. Get it done. Now, I know this is sounding a little unsettling, but when a person that's in charge that has a flat earth mindset, all I see is what is real. They're not following really a rule. They're more following a visual guideline. Can you well, see how the Constitution doesn't matter now or the courts don't matter now? I'm just following my experience and visual guideline. Well, I don't have to worry about judges or attorneys. I just run out the clock on them because I have enough money to. And by the way, I'm just going to pay them money anyways. And by the way, I have plenty of it to spend to them. It doesn't matter how much I lose just so I get the impressions I want. Remember what the title of this, you know, podcast is today: "Truth in the me the the media fo photo op." Right. I am trying to get the impression that my flat Earth mindset is what's real. Well, and I, I completely understand that, Bill, and I I can see how that is very likely some of the things that he was thinking, uh, especially given some of the statements by his press secretary that came out after this whole incident, because she's trying to purchase truth. This is Kaylee McEnany, the yes. uh, president's yeah. press secretary after that has asked all sorts of things about this, this outing to mm -hmm. the church, the photo op. And she's saying, first of all, there was no tear gas used. Well, there were reporters there who witnessed it. And in fact, I mean, the video evidence would say tear gas was used. Uh, reporters are people that were there that were leaving because these, she's trying to, she's tried to say, no, there were pepper balls and this and that used. And well, if you look at the dictionary defi definition of tear gas, those things fall under tear gas because people were left there in tears, crying, having trouble breathing because of the smoke and the gas. It, it's, it's very interesting. She's, she wants a sound bite on Fox News that says, absolutely no tear gas was used and and people some people are not going to go and research and figure that out uh that in fact that's not a truthful statement great point a great example of how truth gets hijacked is the word gas and pepper balls it pepper balls aren't a gas <laughs> so it's kind of true it, that there is not a tear gas per se but it's the thing that is causing tears. This is where the media really gets, uh, the uh, reporters really get stunned because they're trying to follow fact. Right. And what they need to do is follow empathy. And stay, if you follow empathy, it clarifies the mind to speak in observation. I mean, this is like the best quote ever, but right. Uh, that if, would have been if, brilliant. Take yeah, us through this, Bill. What what it, would if you were, um, if you were one of the the press corps there, and she says tear gas was not used, how would you use empathy to get at that? The um, oh, so you would like us to hear and report that there wasn't a specific type of tear gas, and that pepper balls are not fitting into the category that you're using as tear gas even though they're causing people to tear up that it's not really technically a gas. Do I have that correct? Yes. Oh my gosh. I would have loved to see her sort of bend and twist around that. There's no one. room. Yeah. There's no room because you got to get to the place of observation. Oh, so technically it's not a gas because pepper is a molecule as is, is a particle. And just because it is being released the way it is, 
and it happens to cause tears. It's not really something like a gas, like a mustard gas or a other weapons of war gas. It's more of a cow, con cow control chemical or uh, an additive. Is that what you're saying? Yes. See, when you get to the place of observation, instead of right, wrong, good, bad of the technicality, do not get caught in the fact trap. See, she Stay could have gotten she could have gotten really in trouble with herself there had they approached this the right way, like you That's were saying correct. with empathy. Right. She would have right. walked out on that plank. That's by correct. herself. She walked out all by herself. She walked out. And so yeah. there there was a similar thing where, you know, the the press was asking about she was defending this outing like the president was going to inspect the church to see yeah, that, the damage for himself just like winston churchill did in london after the blitz where london buildings were bombed and winston churchill went out and and inspected the damage there that to me that that comparison was also very troubling when it comes to we, you know we've talked about empathy. Propor proportionality we talked yeah, about proportionality yeah. though i mean here yeah. There's facts so many no help issues here. with facts. Facts are no help here. Empathy's help, but facts are no help. So you would like the American people to respect President Trump the way the English respected Churchill. Is that correct? Oh, that's, yes. She would say yes to that in a minute. Keep going, Bill. I want to hear it. <laughs> well, you've got to stay with empathy about what she's going for rather than getting, see that, Everyone gets shocked and, and stunned. And the next question is the pursuit of fact instead of the pursuit of empathy of what the speaker is going for. See, I get exasperated because I watch it. I'm going like, why don't you just ask this question? It'll, it'll blow up their argument, right? Right. Anyway, so. Well, so then you would say. So, so during a time of war, uh, during a time of war, when uh, German bombs were being dropped on um, uh, being dropped on Lon London, is similar to the protests that are happening outside. Is that correct? No, what? no, it's the it's the <laughs> it's the damage. Oh, so when certain structures are being burned, President Trump wants to be seen in front of a burned building to really command the same kind of respect that Churchill did. Yes. So do you see that is the America is America at war with her yourself? Is that what the president would like to convey? No. Ouch. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. See, if you're trying to meet the need for respect by using a respectful historical character you better be have some sense of the context that it's in because there's got to be a truth match to it but if you want to be truthful about respect or truth regarding courage uh, i'm i'm kind of guessing that if there's no security or no clearing of those places Trump would have never gotten to that site because the crowds would have been, dude, we're going to be yelling and screaming at you the entire way. There's nobody close to them because of the amount of clearing that really kind of took place in order to get him to that space. Now, even if he was there, he could have saved it by just doing the compassionate empathetic speech the unity speech that you know mattis in the you know in his thing in the atlantic said you know he's not going to be a unifier he's never did a unifier he's a divider and i don't know i think i think trump i think uh joe biden has his Trump the divider, not the unifier. Keep it simple. Wow, there's a, there's a label, Joe. Yeah. 
Joe, are you Trump listening? the divider. Joe the United. I'm a Joe the unifier. The unifier. Do you want the divider or do you want the unifier? I'm oh Joe Biden. Goodness. Biden campaign, I hope you're listening because this is <laughs> actually, gonna, you're, gonna, you're giving them uh, hashtag a, Joe Biden. <laughs> very, the, very good advice here. <laughs> the, 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 the challenge is, is that the Constitution is written as the unifier. And, and that's not what's being done by this presidency. I mean, it's unsettling because you and I get closer to the truth, Tom, when we're bantering back and forth because we're empathizing with the media and the marketing and the branding message that Trump is conveying. It's not to say that they're wrong. It's just that there's nothing behind it or very, very little behind it that's actually... He's a sizzle guy. He's not delivering right. the steaks, even right. though he sold steaks in the past. He still doesn't deliver. It's it's really unsettling. It is unsettling. And what's what's so uh, also very unsettling is how the press allows themselves, the press corps really walks right into yeah. the trap that he sort of sets for them and or his press secretary sets of pursuing truth, which doesn't help, pursuing facts rather, I'm sorry, pursuing right. facts that really doesn't help. And they, if they just got some skill, it'd be much more effective. And you know what you just did? Out. You just gave us the title for our next uh, podcast. What is that? It's, it's the uh, truth and the communication traps uh, um, you know, it's, uh, you know, purchasing truth and the communication traps. I think that's, that's where we, we go next. Cause what winds up happening is, is that there can be this really wonderful place of taking a look at here are all the traps that, that are set that, 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 that the media walks into as well as how to get around those so that you can get the answer you want, you know? So all right. Anyways. Sounds good, Bill. I look forward to that. That'll be a good one. All right, Tom. This has been a great one. Thanks a million. Thank you for listening to this Purchasing Truth podcast. We trust that you have enjoyed this engaging and thought-provoking conversation. Our hope is that you've received value, found clarity, and broadened your truth perspective in this episode. If you did, leave us a review or visit our website, purchasingtruth.com. Join us again for another informative and content-rich discussion here at the Purchasing Truth Podcast. Don't just accept whatever information comes your way. Join the discussion. Discover your own voice. Purchase your own truth.